Let us now take a final quiz. <clears throat> The maximum rate of interest paid on calls in advance as per table A is A. 5% B. 6% C. 10% and D. 4% per annum. The maximum rate of interest paid on calls in advance as per table A is supposed to be 6% per annum. 6% per annum. Correct answer should be B. 6% per annum. The maximum rate of interest that can be charged on calls in arrears as per table A is A 5%, B 6%, C 10% and D 4% per annum. Maximum rate of interest for calls in arrear was A, 5% per annum. The correct answer should be 5% per annum as per table A. <clears throat> Which of the following statements is false? A, forfeited shares should not be issued at a premium. B, at the time of forfeiture of shares, securities premium should not be debited with the amount of premium already received. C, Shares can be issued at a discount only after one year from the commencement of business. And D. Securities premium account cannot be utilized to redeem preference shares. Which of the following statements is false, false, false? Not true. <clears throat> that means all these statements below are true except one. The, the uh, forfeited shares should not be issued at a premium. There is no restriction. Forfeited shares can be issued at a premium. Therefore, this is our false statement. The correct answer is A being the false statement. Let us just go through the other uh, options also. It, it serves as a revision. At the time of forfeiture of shares, securities premium should not be debited with the amount of premium already received. True. Yes or no? If you remember, when shares are uh, forfeited, if securities premium has already been received, then this securities premium cannot be transferred to, 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 to shares forfeited account. Securities premium has certain limited uses. So, if securities premium is already received, then that is not to be debited. It will lie, continue, the amount will continue to lie in the securities premium account. Next sentence says, shares can be issued at a discount only after one year from the commencement of business. This is true. This was true as per the earlier Companies Act. As per the new Companies Act 2013, shares cannot be issued at a discount at all. At all. <clears throat> the securities premium cannot be utilized to redeem preference shares. True. That is also true. Securities premium cannot be used to redeem preference shares. It can be used to set off the premium on the redemption of preference shares but cannot be used to redeem preference shares. So in this case the correct answer should be A. That is the false statement. The power of forfeiture of share is exercised by A. Promoters of the company. B. Directors as per the rules and regulations provided in the articles of association. C. Shareholders at annual general meeting and D. The government. The power of forfeiture of share is exercised by. The correct answer should be the directors. The power of forfeiture is vested with the directors if authorized by its articles of association. So the correct answer B. The power of forfeiture of shares is exercised by directors as per rules and regulations provided in the articles of association. Next, voluntary return of shares for cancellation by the shareholders is called A. Surrender of shares, B. Forfeiture of share, C. Cancellation of share and D. Distribution of shares. Voluntary return of shares for cancellation is called surrender of shares. Correct answer, option A. Next, 
Which type of the following shares have the right to receive dividends unpaid in prior years whenever earnings become adequate? A. Cumulative preference shares B. Participating preference shares C. Convertible preference shares and D. Callable preference shares The right to receive dividends unpaid previously These are called cumulative preference shares Cumulative preference shares Correct answer A. Cumulative preference shares So if they don't get dividend in a particular year we, the areas of dividend accumulate and when there is adequate profit first the areas of dividend are paid and then subsequently the current year dividends are paid only after the dividends of all sh the shareholders for all the years is paid is dividend given to equity shareholders so if dividend on preference shares is not paid in the year of profit and the share is a cumulative share the dividend will accumulate and it will be paid in the year when adequate profits are made. Cumulative preference shares. A company forfeited 2000 shares of 10 each which were issued at par held by Mr. John for non-payment of allotment money of 4 per share. The called up value per share is rupees 9. On forfeiture, the amount debited to share capital is A. 10,000 B. 8,000 C. 2,000 and D. 18,000 The company forfeited 2,000 shares for non-payment of allotment money. Called up value is only 9 per share. Therefore, the amount which will be debited to share capital will be 9 per share into 2000 per share equal to 18,000. Correct answer should be D, 18,000. Which of the following statements is false? A. Shares can be issued for cash or any other consideration. B. In the event of oversubscription, excess amount has to be refunded or a pro rata allotment is to be made. C. A company must receive a minimum of 90% subscription against the entire issue as per the SEBI guidelines. And D, the share application money is automatically converted to share capital. Which of the following statements is false? False. Shares can be issued for cash or any other consideration. Yes, we did issue of shares for consideration other than cash. In the event of oversubscription, so if more money is received, excess money has to be refunded, yes, or a pro rata allotment is to be made, true, so that's also true. A company must receive a minimum of 90% subscription, this is called minimum subscription, right? Minimum subscription against the entire issue as per SEBI guidelines, that's also true. Therefore, this must be false. What is this? The share application money is automatically converted to share capital. No, share application money is received. The directors may have to go through the applications, check everything. Only after everything is in order can shares be allotted and the application money transferred to capital account. Right? So, the correct answer which statement is false? Statement D is false. Which of the following is not true? Again, it's not true. A. Loss on reissue of shares cannot be more than the gain on forfeiture of those shares. B. Where all forfeited shares are not reissued, the share forfeited account will show a credit balance equal to gain on forfeiture of shares not yet reissued. C. When the shares are forfeited, securities premium is debited along with share capital where premium has not been received. D. Where forfeited shares are reissued at a premium, the amount of such premium is credited to capital reserve account. Which of them is false? I just go through them again. A. Loss on reissue of shares cannot be more than the gain on forfeiture of shares. That's correct. You cannot have a discount on reissue which is more than the amount you have received 
on the shares forfeited. Where all forfeited shares are not reissued, the share forfeited account will show a credit balance equal to the gain on forfeiture of shares not yet reissued perfect. It's true. When the shares are forfeited, securities premium is debited along with share capital if premium has not been received. If it has been received, we cannot debit securities premium. But if it has not been received, we debit securities premium. So what is the last statement? Where forfeited shares are reissued at premium, the amount of such premium is credited to securities premium account, not capital reserve, securities premium account. Therefore, option D is false. So correct answer D. That is the false statement, not true statement. Next, when shares are forfeited, share capital account is debited by when shares are forfeited, share capital account is debited by A, nominal value of the shares, B, paid up amount of the shares, C, called up amount of the shares, and D, forfeited amount. Share capital account is debited by the called up amount of the shares, called up amount of the shares. Obviously, it will not be the nominal value of the shares because if it's not fully called up, we do not Capital account has not been credited, therefore we cannot debit the full value of the capital. It cannot be the paid up amount because the person concerned has paid up only something less. There is call scenario, that is why we forfeit the shares. So the share capital account is debited by the called up amount of the shares. Correct answer C. Next. B Limited has issued its shares of rupees 10 each at a discount of rupees 2 per share. 10 each at discount of 2 per share. Ram holding 100 shares could not pay final call of rupees 5 per share. His shares were forfeited. Later on, the company decided to reissue these shares. The maximum amount of loss per share on such reissue could be A rupees 5, B 2. C, 7 and D, rupees 13. Maximum amount of loss per share on the reissue. Rupees 10 share. Discount of rupees 2. So the amount payable is rupees 8. Out of rupees 8, Rupees 5 not paid. So the amount received is only rupees 3. Only rupees 3 has been paid by Ram. 3 per share has been paid by Ram. Therefore, therefore, the maximum amount of discount on such reissue can be the 3 rupees which has been paid by Ram plus the 2 rupees of original discount. Therefore, the correct answer should be rupees 5. A rupees 5 should be the maximum amount of loss per share on a reissue. Usually, when shares are being reissued, forfeited shares are being reissued, the maximum discount that we can offer is an amount which is equal to the amount forfeited. The amount forfeited in this instant is rupees 3. However, if the original shares were issued at a discount, the amount of discount is reinstated. Therefore, the new shares, the maximum amount, that the, the maximum amount of discount that can be offered on reissue would be the 3 rupees which is received plus the 2 rupees of original discount amount of rupees 5. Next, which of the following statements is false? A. Issued capital can never be more than authorized capital. B. In case of undersubscription, issued capital is less than subscribed capital. C. Uncalled capital may be converted into reserve capital. D. Paid up capital is equal to called up capital less call scenarios. Which of the following statements is false? False.
Issued capital can never be more than authorized capital is correct. In the case of under subscription, issued capital is less than subscribed capital. No, this statement is false. If you issue 1 lakh shares and only 9 lakh shares are subscribed for, then we say issued capital is 1 lakh, subscribed capital is 9 lakh. Right? So this statement is false. Uncalled capital may be converted into reserve capital is true. Paid up capital is nothing but called up capital less calls and areas is true. So in this case, B is our answer. B is the false statement. Next, discount on reissue of shares forfeited cannot exceed. Discount on reissue of shares forfeited cannot exceed. A, 50% of the face value. B, face value. C, 50% of the amount forfeited. D, amount forfeited. Discount on reissue of shares cannot exceed the amount forfeited. The correct answer should be D. D, amount forfeited. Discount on reissue cannot exceed the amount forfeited. Right shares are issued to A, promoters for the services. B. Holders of convertible debentures. C. Existing shareholders. D. All the above. Correct answer should be existing shareholders. Right shares are issued to C. Existing shareholders.